Have you ever felt thankful that one of your friends gave you a heads up, even if it was awkward for them? We've all had these moments, right? No one likes hearing that they've had food on their shirt or toilet paper stuck to their shoe. But when someone cares enough about us to look out for us and save us from future embarrassment, we're definitely grateful. Have you ever felt like you should really say something to someone else, but you weren't sure how to go about saying it? Speaking up in situations like this is beyond difficult. So we usually just avoid the conversations altogether, don't we? But why? Maybe we don't wanna ruin a friendship or make someone mad. Maybe we're doing or have done the same things in the past, so we don't wanna feel like we have the right to say anything. Maybe we don't think the other person will listen, or maybe we just don't know what to say or how to say it. For some of you, the situation is the opposite. You have no problem telling people exactly how you see it. You're not shy about speaking up at all. The problem with that though, is that you may not always be able to speak up in a way that they're gonna wanna listen. What if we could learn a way to approach difficult conversations? Here's the thing, no one wants to be known as a hater. So when it comes to being a friend who looks out for others, how do we make sure we handle it in the right way? Last week, we talked about how we should be able to be all about love. I mean, who wouldn't wanna have a reputation for loving others? No matter how tough we wanna appear or trendy hating on others is, we all know it's better to be known for loving others. Paul actually talked about this very thing. In a letter to the church in a region called Galatia, where modern day Turkey is now, Paul gave insight on this topic. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. In other words, he's saying you and I should actually go further than just saying something in a conversation. We should help someone get back to the best place they can be, on track with what God says is best. The point is, according to Paul, with humility and gentleness, you and I can help people who are struggling with making poor decisions get back on the right path. The next verse continues, share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. Paul cared deeply about the people of Galatia, which is why he wrote what he did. He knew that the most loving thing to do isn't always the easiest thing to do, but we owe it to each other to speak up. In other words, Jesus' followers must do more than just speak up and point out what's wrong. Being kind, helpful, and encouraging shows people that we wanna help them live out love. Hard conversations aren't easy, but avoiding a hard conversation isn't loving either. We should ask ourselves, am I showing love in how I'm treating this person? Well, if you're going to choose to be known for your love for others, then when it comes to what you say and how you help others, remember this, let love be your filter. You already know how filters work. Choose a filter on Snapchat or Instagram, and no matter where you look, it changes what you see. The same is true for choosing love as a filter. When we help someone make a different choice than they have been making, we do it even if it makes us feel totally awkward in the moment. So what exactly should a filter of love be applied to? Here's a few ideas. Let love be the filter for your involvement. When you aren't sure if you should get involved in a friend's situation, ask yourself, what's the most loving thing I can do? Use this question as a filter for your next step. Second, let love be the filter for your words. Ask yourself, how would I want someone to speak to me? And what would I want him or her to say? When you filter your words through love, you'll stop and make sure you're not just throwing shade. Your words can spark hope or cast judgment. If you filter them through love, they will be words that can help someone else's life get back on track. Third, let love be the filter for your actions and reactions. If we have friends that are having a hard time keeping their lives headed in the right direction, chances are they won't just need your words, they'll need your help. No matter what the situation is, if you filter your actions through love, you'll wind up being known for the way you love others, and you'll live out Paul's call to help share the burden of other people. When we let love be our filter, we wind up sharing the burdens of those we love. Imagine how our schools, friendships, and families would be different if there were more people filtering their involvement, words, and actions through love. 
And it starts with us. Let's be the people who let love be our filter so that we can help those we love to stay headed in the best direction for their lives.